everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Stories for Little People. Thank you for joining me here at the East Side Freedom Library. Um, so I hope you have your snack and we're going to get started with our first book of the day. And it's called 10,000 Dresses. Here we go. Every night, Bailey dreamed about dresses. A long staircase led to a red Valentine castle. On each stair, there was a brand new dress just waiting to be tried on. 10,000 dresses in all and each one different. The first dress was made of crystals. When Bailey slipped on the dress, the crystals clinked against each other like millions of tiny bells. And when sunlight hit the dress, dress right, rainbows jumped out. With all her heart, Bailey loved the dress made of crystals that flashed rainbows in the sun. When Bailey woke up, she went to find her mother. Mother was in the kitchen cutting out coupons. Mom, I dreamt about a dress said Bailey. Uh-huh, said her mother. A dress made of crystals that flashed rainbows in the sun. Uh-huh. And I was wondering if you would, like, buy me a dress like that. Bailey, what are you talking about? You're a boy. Boys don't wear dresses. But I don't feel like a boy, Bailey said. Well, you are one, Bailey, and that's that. Now go away and don't mention dresses again. Bailey went to her room. Now, she would never have a dress made of crystals that flashed rainbows in the sun. That night, Bailey walked right past the crystal dress and went to the second stair. There was a dress made of lilies and roses. When she slipped it on, she saw that the sleeves were made of honeysuckles. Bailey picked up a few of the blossoms to taste the little drops of honey. With all her heart, Bailey loved that dress made of lilies and roses with sunny suckle sleeves. Bailey woke up and went to find her father. He was in the backyard pulling up weeds. Dad, I dreamt about a dress, Bailey said. Uh-huh, said the father. A dress made of lilies and roses with honeysuckle sleeves. Uh-huh. And I was wondering if you could grow me a dress like that. Bailey, what are you talking about? You're a boy. Boys don't wear dresses. But I don't feel like a boy, said, she said. Well, you are one, Bailey. And that's that. Now go away and don't mention dresses again. Bailey went to her room. Now she would never have a dress made of lilies and roses with honeysuckle sleeves. That night, Bailey walked right past the crystal dress and the dress made of lilies and roses and went to the third stair. There was a dress made of windows. One window showed the Great Wall of China and the another, the pyramids. With all her heart, Bailey loved the dress made of windows, which showed the Great Wall of China and the pyramids. That's my favorite dress. Bailey woke up and went to find her brother. He was playing soccer with some kids. I dreamt about a dress, she told him. A dress made of windows, which showed the Great Wall of China and the pyramids. You dream about dresses, Bailey? That's gross. You're a boy. But, Bailey said, but nothing. Get out of here before I kick you. That's a mean brother. Bailey ran and ran. She ran all the way to the end of the block until she came to a house with a big blue porch. An older girl was sitting there with needles and thread and old sheets. What are you doing, Bailey asked. Making dresses, said the big girl. But it's really hard. Mine all come out looking the same. 
Maybe I can help, said Bailey. Bailey told Laurel, the big girl, about the dress made out of windows, which showed the Great Wall of China and the pyramids. That's awesome, said Laurel. But how do we make the dress out of windows? Well, we'll use some old mirrors instead, said Bailey. Together, the girls made two new dresses, which were covered with mirrors and all, of all shapes and sizes. These dresses don't show us the Great Wall of China or the Pyramid, said Laurel. No, said Bailey, but they do show us ourselves. You're the coolest girl I've ever met, Bailey, said Laurel. Hey, do you think you can dream up any more dresses? Bailey grinned. I think I can dream up to up 10,000 dresses. The end. And that was 10,000 dresses. So if you want to wear a dress, wear a dress. Our next story is called, What's This? A Seeds Story. One winter morning, a bird saw the seed. He flew down to have a closer look. The bird hopped around the seed. He looked at it from the left and he looked at it from the right. What's this? thought the bird. A little girl came by. She too looked at the seed. What's this? she wondered. Let's find out, she said to the bird. A marmalade cat came by. The little girl planted the seed carefully in the corner of her garden. What's this? She asked the cat. The cat, the cat looked at the girl wisely. It's something that grows, she said. You will have to give it water. The little girl listened and remembered. On days when it rained, she did not water the seed, but on days when it was sunny, she gave it a long, cool drink. Spring came to the garden. The bird and the little girl and the marmalade cat watched and waited. The seed started to grow. A thin stem pushed out of the ground and two small leaves opened at the top. Soon, the plant was taller than the bird. It grew more leaves and its stem became longer and longer. Summer came to the garden. Now, the plant was taller than the cat. The sun grew hotter and hotter. Sometimes the little girl had to water the plant twice a day. Its stem became so long that she had to tie it to a stick stop it from falling over. Even plants need help sometimes too, and that's okay. Every day when she woke up, the little girl ran straight out to the garden to look at the plant that was growing from the seed. And one morning she ran outside. And one morning she ran outside there Turning its head to the sun was a magnificent sunflower seed, or sunflower, from the seed. Whenever she could, the little girl would, the girl, little girl visited the sunflower. She told it all of her secrets. The marmalade cat and the bird watched and listened. They listened to her secrets too. Fall came to the garden. When the sunflowers had drooped, the little girl carried it carefully with her to school and gave it to her teacher. Together, they shook the head gently so that all the seeds dropped off 
Then they could keep the seeds in a special place. Winter passed and spring returned. The children in the class planted their sunflower seeds in the pots. Every day they watched them and watched them. And when the next summer came, every child had a beautiful smiling sunflower. And that was What's This? A seed story. Plants need watering just like we do. Don't forget that. Don't forget to hydrate and drink your water. All right. So our next book and our last book is called The Three Little Pigs. It is one of my favorite stories ever. <clears throat> Here we go. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs who lived in a big house in the forest. One day, the three pigs said goodbye to their mother and went off to make their own way in the world, like we all have to do sometimes. The first little pig decided to build his house of scraps. The second little pig decided to build his house of glass. That's going to be interesting. But the third little pig decided to build his house of stone and concrete. Now, there was an evil, evil wolf who lived in the woods nearby. One day he came to the house on the first, of the first little pig and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. But the pig answered, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. This made the wolf so angry that he said, then I'll huff and I'll buff and I'll blow your house in. The wolf huff, huffed and puffed and he blew the house of scraps away. The first little pig ran as fast as he could to the house of his brother. Soon the wolf came to the house of the second little pig. The wolf called out, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. The second pig answered, Not by the hair uh, on my chinny chin chin. The wolf gashed his teeth and said, Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. And the wolf huffed and he puffed and he blew the house of glass to smithereens. So the two little pigs ran as fast as their little legs would take them to the house of their brother. Finally, the wolf arrived at the house of the third little pig. The wolf growled at the door. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. But the third little pig replied, not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. This enraged the evil wolf, who roared, Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So he puffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed, but he couldn't budge the house of stone and concrete. The wolf said, Little pig, meet me tomorrow morning at seven at the farmer rights, and I'll show you a fine tomato greenhouse. But the pig awoke at six, picked the best tomatoes in the greenhouse, and was home slicing them for lunch by the time the wolf arrived. I'll get, I'll get you yet, said the wolf under his breath. The wolf returned to the third pig's house and said, Little pig, meet me tomorrow morning at six at Farmer Johnson's, and I'll show you an orchid full of tasty apples. The next morning at five, the pig was picking the best apples in Farmer Johnson's orchid when along came the wolf. Good, aren't they, said the wolf. They certainly are, said the pig. Here, 
try one. And the wolf chased the apple and the third pig ran home to his house of stone and concrete. That evening, the wolf went back to the third little pig's house and said, I'll meet you at Frank's flea market tomorrow morning at five. So the pig arrived at four. He was admiring a fine rug when he saw the wolf approaching. Uh-oh. He hid himself in the rug and rolled down the hill towards the wolf. The wolf sped away. The wolf sped away with the rug falling after him. The third pig returned home and where, where he and his brothers prepared a roaring fire in the fireplace and settled in for the evening. Tricked again, the wolf rushed to the third pig's house, saying under his breath, Little pigs, I'll get you yet. The wolf climbed onto the roof and shouted down the chimney, I'm coming in to get you. But the wolf tumbled into the roaring fire, scorching his tail. Ouch! The wolf ran from the house, smoke steaming after him and was never seen in the forest again. The three little pigs ate a supper of tomato, tomato soup and apple pie, and they lived happily ever after. And that was the three little pigs. All right, before we end today's episode, I just wanna tell you all some big news I will be leaving Minnesota I know I'm so sad but I'll be going on a big adventure to a new state meeting new people for school so I'm very excited and I'm very sad that I'll be leaving you all but there will be someone amazing who will be reading to you all on Saturdays so don't miss out on that I'm so happy that I was able to join you all whenever I could and I'm happy to be here and I'm also really happy to for this new adventure. So hopefully someone else will be here next Saturday and we'll see you then. Goodbye. <laughs>